Welcome back to Skippers today. I have three players that I think are primed for a big second half. Let's get into the players. The first guy I'm going to talk about is Vinny Pasquantino of the Royals. Right now, 218 average, three homers, five runs batted in, and a 665 OPS. I was scrolling the old Twitter machine. Someone tweeted this last night before the game. They just did a couple comparisons of his um, real numbers against the expected number. So here we go. Average 205. This is before yesterday's game where he got a couple hits. His expected average is 287. His ISO 120 is expected ISO 224. Weighted on base average 288. His expected weighted on base average is 388. Exit velocity average is 94 miles an hour. Max exit velo is 113 miles an hour. His barrel percentage is 14%. His zone contact percentage is 92%. Swing strike percentage of 5.8% a walk rate of 11% and a batting average of balls in play of only 235. Vinny Pasquantino is a very, very good hitter and the quality of contact metrics are really good as well as he has a good advanced approach at the plate for a young hitter. Let's look at this from a dynasty perspective as well. I think this is just an easy buy on a guy. If he doesn't explode in the second half, like I think he will and really break out into a guy who can hit for power, which he was really doing in the minors this season. Um, I think this is a guy awesome for next year. So for sure, dynasty buy. And I think he's going to break out in the second half for your fantasy teams. The second guy I want to talk about is Trey Mancini of the Orioles. 268 average, nine home runs, 37 runs batted in and 36 runs scored. No one in baseball has had more home runs taken away from them than Trey Mancini. Mancini has nine actual home runs and 16.1 expected home runs. And that is because of the stupid left field wall at Camden Yards. But I read a report, Mancini is preparing to play his final games as a member of the Orioles this weekend. And a change of scenery would really help a player like Trey Mancini and his numbers in the second half. I'm not saying he had a bad first half. I think he had actually really good first half. But those expected home runs, 9 versus 16 is a totally different output. You're on pace probably for 28 instead of on pace for 18 at this point, right? He has a 339 weighted on base average. A weighted runs create a plus of 113 and an expected batting average of 273. Expected batting average, expected weight on base average, and expected slug are all greater than the 82nd percentile. And I think Trey Mancini is not a big enough name. I think he's a pretty cheap player to go out and get before the trade deadline. And I'd want to acquire him before he gets an awesome park upgrade. It doesn't really matter where it is, but I think anything other than Camden Yards will be an upgrade for Trey Mancini as a power hitting right-handed bat. He can hit for average as well. I think production will go up. He's in a decent spot right now, but it can and get a lot better. So I think Trey Mancini is primed for a big second half and a player I definitely want to acquire. And finally, one of my favorite pitchers, a guy who has also had a good first half, but I think can get a lot better in the second half, is going to be Luis Castillo of the Reds. Three and four, 277 ERA, 78 innings pitched, 82 strikeouts, 108 whip. He's a great player, right? He's had a really good bounce back season after pretty much a disaster at the start of last year. Um, what is the problem with Luis Castillo this season? And it's the win category. If you're in Roto Leagues, you're like, oh, this guy is contributing in the ERA. He's racking up a decent amount of strikeouts. But we're just missing that win category. We're getting hurt with that lack of production. Only three wins for a guy. A ton of starts here in a bunch of innings. Again, it's not really his fault. It's the team around him. That's why wins is kind of an outdated stat when it comes to fantasy in Roto formats. You'd like to get away from that. Maybe a quality start metric would be a little bit better. Um, but if he gets traded to a contender, which they all talk about, they're going to give up the prospect for him to try and acquire Luis Castillo, like the Blue Jays, Yankees, teams like that. He has no problem fixing that wins category, and he could easily be a top 20 arm the rest of the season. So far, 326 expected ERA, but a 305 FIP. His X slug and barrel percentage are over the 80th percentile, and he might have the best fastball in baseball as a starter. He's averaging 97 miles an hour on the pitch, which is seventh best. He has the best swing strike percentage on any fastball in baseball. Sorry, for starters, I believe here. Called strike and whiff rate of 35.4%, fifth best. And expected average on his fastball is 157 ton of uh, 34th best spin. There is a good amount of spin, but Luis Castillo is a really good player. I think if we get an upgrade on the team, he is going to be very good the rest of the season and just continue plowing on. Let me know who you guys think are going to break out in the second half. Let me know if you like these players. Please keep subscribing. Join the Discord talk with all the folks in there. Thank you for watching, and we will see you guys next time.